We now welcome on Phil Steele, a college football legend. His previews are beloved by fans for good reason. One of the most thought out, well-researched previews you will find in the entire country. Phil, thanks for coming on. Hey, a real pleasure, Bennett. Always enjoy talking JMU football. We're excited to have you on. If you're watching on our YouTube, I encourage everyone to like and subscribe. But Phil, let's dive right into it. You've got the Dukes, I believe, in a tie for second, a three-way tie for second in the Sunbelt East. So clearly there's some positives, even with the coaching staff turnover. What is it about the Dukes roster, coaching staff, program, whatever, that sort of has you still believing they could contend atop the Sunbelt East? Yeah, it's pretty remarkable the amount of players that they lost, especially to Indiana. In fact, when I went over the team uh, with Coach Signetti, uh, the JMU transfers just kept popping up. All of a sudden, they go from number 68 on my experience chart down to number 130. Yeah. And I did a blog on philsteel.com a couple of weeks ago, which talked about how teams that have that kind of experience drop off usually have a large drop off in record. However, I like the replacements Coach Chesney has brought in. You look at quarterback Dylan Morris guy that comes in from Washington. He's He actually was a full-time starter at Washington. He was uh, one of my top-rated quarterbacks out of high school, uh, my number nine-rated QB. I think he's going to do well. Uh, they've got Alonzo Barnett there as well, Billy Atkins. You look at the running back core, they bring in Adehi from uh, North Texas, Petaway from North Carolina. I like those additions. Cam Ross coming in from UConn at, at the receiver position. And the offensive line has got three starters back from last year's group. So uh, it's a group that Coach Chesney was excited about. Feels they have a lot of good experience and depth. Then you go defensively. Probably my biggest question because they lost a ton of talent, especially off that defensive line. But once again, the transfer portal has brought players in. And while they've got transfers that come in from Long Island, uh, Youngstown State, uh, even a, a D3 school, the thing I found, uh, Bennett, is that these transfers that transfer up, as long as they have experience, they come in, they're happy with the training table, the advanced weight training, and they step right in and play. I had doubts about that three years ago. I have no such doubts because I go over every roster with every uh, coach, yeah. and it seems like these players that step up via transfer are having great success. So I, I don't think they'll have any doubt those guys will play. A guy like uh, Jacob Dobbs coming in from Holy Cross at the Mike Linebacker position, familiar with the unit. Played at Holy Cross for Coach Chesney. Uh, was even taken to SBC Media Days. I think he's going to have a major impact. And then when you look at the schedule this year for James Madison, uh, I only am an underdog in two games, uh, a slight underdog at Georgia Southern and at App State. I've got them favored in all the rest of their games. They get probably their toughest opponents at home, like Coastal Carolina and Marshall. Uh, so I think it could be a pretty good year for JMU. Yeah, definitely a, a favorable schedule, like you mentioned. And and you mentioned talking to coaches, Chesney included. What did you hear from him? I know you talked to pretty much every coach in the country about how they feel about their roster, which gives you some some great insights. What were sort of his takeaways? Did he sound confident about the the group that he has? Yeah, he did. He understands that they lost a lot and there's a big turnover here. But uh, he likes the talent that he brought in, as do I. Uh, I mean, going over the roster with him and, you know, strengths and weaknesses of the players and knowing the players that he brought in, uh, I think he brought in some great transfers and he likes his system. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a fun year for James Madison. Not the big drop off I originally anticipated. When all these players left, I got to tell you, I'm thinking, you know, how is GMU going to be competitive? But after talking to Coach Chesney and see what he did in the transfer portal, uh, I'm pretty bullish on these guys. Awesome. Now let's talk Sunbelt East in general. App State is your pick and most people's pick to win the East. They return a ton really talented. The Dukes and Mountaineers have had some great games the last couple of years and even dating back farther than that in their FCS days. What is it about App State that makes them sort of seemingly a clear cut favorite atop the East? Yeah, you probably have to start with a quarterback. Joey Aguiar stepped in last year and did a tremendous job. I mean, you're looking at a guy that had a 33-10 ratio. Uh, he's also can run the football. The running back core is uh, Coach Clark told me it's the deepest running back core he's had. So I, I like that. Then you look at the receiving core. They've got size. They've got speed. Uh, and Coach Clark feels they're the best wide receiving core in the country, or in the uh, conference, I should say. Offensive line's my big question mark. They only have one starter coming back. But once again, Coach Clark said he, athletically he likes where they are. 
and he feels that this could be the surprise unit of the season. And really, that is, to me, the key of App State this year is the offensive line. If they come together quickly and are the surprise unit, Coach Clark says they are, that's going to be an explosive offense. Defensively, there are no such questions. Six starters are back. Most of the top guys are back as well. Guy like Nate Johnson at that outside linebacker position uh, was a freshman All-American. I think he's going to have a major impact. You look at the cornerback with Ethan Johnson. Uh, and so this is a, a very talented App State team. They get James Madison at home. I think that's huge. And uh, they, they they do have to play Clemson on the road and East Carolina on the road. So it's a couple of tough non-conference games. But in conference play, I only have my dog in one game, and that's at Louisiana, a slight underdog in that one. Yeah, they've, they've got a tough non-conference for sure. You mentioned the offensive line with the Mountaineers. Does it help at all that I guess Sean Clark has that offensive line background? Does that factor in at all that you're – projections knowing that the head guy sort of cares a lot about the offensive line has that experience to make sure that the unit's all right yeah it does and uh, you know talking to coach clark i wanted to hear what this ol coach thought of his offensive <laughs> line and and he feels that they're going to surprise some people this year uh, i'm still a little skeptical with yeah. just one starter back but uh, we'll see we'll see how that shakes out the rest of the east seems maybe a little more wide open who are some of the teams you think alongside jmu and app state could could factor into the mix this year you know, I think Marshall could surprise. Uh, mm -hmm. You go back to last year when I talked to Coach Huff. They, you know, two years ago, this team was just dominantly physical up front on that defensive front seven. And last year, talking to Coach Huff, he said, "Well, Phil, we lost a lot of guys. We'll be different on the defense." And they were different, but not in a good way. They went from allowing 295 yards per game to 377. Went from allowing 2.9 yards per carry to 4.3. This year, he's pretty bullish on that defensive line. Thinks they can be as good or better than what they had even two years ago. Michael Green might just be the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, so look out for this Marshall defensive line. They're back to where they were two years ago. Now, there are question marks at quarterback. No doubt about it. Mitch Griffiths, who I had projected in the magazine to be the starter, stepped away. It's Cole Pennington or Braylon Braxton. But I don't know if quarterback's the most important position on this team. The defensive front, I think, is. And if they can dominate like they did two years ago, they're a team that could surprise. And Georgia Southern. Yeah. You know, I've been talking to Coach Helton uh, all the way back to his USC days. And this is probably the most optimistic I've talked to Coach Helton that he's been about a team. You know, they've gone six and seven each of his first two years. Uh, but he feels that this is pretty much every position he wrapped up said, this is the best we've been since we've been here. He feels they are finally the legitimate Sun Belt East contender. So keep your eyes on Georgia Southern. And I think those are your main contenders in the East. I do want to point out that with Old Dominion, mm -hmm. I did not expect Ricky Ronnie to be in two bowls in the last three <laughs> years. I had his team picked at the bottom. And each time this guy somehow gets to a bowl yeah. game, I picked him at the bottom again. So he should be thankful for that. And then out of the West, you got to keep your eyes on Texas State. G.J. Kinney did a great job. You know, you've got a, an FCS coach stepping in that brings a lot of his transfers from his school, and it worked out. Now they bring in Jordan McLeod coming in from James Madison, who is the Sun Belt Offensive Player of the Year. They got Ismail Mahdi at running back, uh, one of the top running backs in the country. And they also had in Deion Hankins. They call them Tankins at UTEP. This guy could be a really dangerous runner. They got Pear and Jenkins. That's a deep running back core. And the defense is upgraded this year. Watch Ben Bell up front of the defensive end spot. But I think the West is a three-team battle. Texas State does get both Louisiana and Arkansas State at home. That's why I've got them the favorite. But Louisiana, under Michael uh, Des uh, Desermo, is a, a team that uh, is clearly the most talented they've been. His first two teams were inexperienced. Last year, for example, number 108 on my experience chart. This year, they're all the way up to number 17. Once again, check out that blog I put out two weeks ago. You can go to archives for blogs and pick it up, but it talks about how teams that make a big jump experience-wise make a big jump the next year. This is clearly Desermo's best team he's had, and uh, they've got two experienced quarterbacks as well. And then Arkansas State, you know, Butch Jones last year was in his third year. That's generally when head coaches hit their stride. He still only had the number 113 experienced team. However, he inherited or he put in Jalen Rayner at QB, and Rayner was exciting. And Rayner comes back this year. Uh, with the season under his belt, he's a sophomore. He was at the Manning Pass Academy, and they finally have an experienced team all the way up to number five on my experience chart. The reason I picked them third, they do have to play both Texas State and Louisiana on the road, but I think those three are your main contenders in the West.
Yeah, that should be a fun division to watch too. And McLeod in that Texas State offense, I think is going to be going to be a lot of fun to watch. You mentioned App State, Texas State as sort of maybe the divisional favorites this year. The G five's got playoff access. I've heard a lot about Boise State being a playoff favorite. Are they sort of yours as well in terms of which G five team enters the year with the best chance of getting into the playoff? Yeah, I've got Boise right there at number one. But you know, I think we've got some great matchups. You look at when Texas State plays UTEP early on that could be a uh, uh, now you know I've never talked about playoff elimination teams with a group of five <laughs> before I have talked about that with your your Alabamas and your Ohio States hey this could be a playoff elimination game yeah. that's a legitimate playoff el elimination game there week two because I think Texas State can upset Arizona State mm -hmm. and you look at the rest of their schedule their road games in the Sun Belt are Troy which is really in a rebuilding mode this year Old Dominion uh, as I talked about Ricky Ronnie somehow gets his team to bowls ULM a new head coach and South Alabama. So they could run the table if yeah. they get past UTSA early app state. If they were to knock off East Carolina and your only loss on the season is Clemson, they'd have a shot at getting there. So I think it's exciting. If you're in the Sun Belt, if you're in the American, if you're in the mountain West, uh, I think all three of those conferences have a great shot at landing a playoff spot. Yeah, that should be a, an exciting battle. I know Jamie fans are obviously going to pay attention to that. I think they're also going to be keeping an eye on Bloomington this year with Kurt Signetti and a whole number of all Sunbelt Dukes playing for that Indiana roster. What do you make of Indiana? I believe you were pretty glowing in, in the magazine, and I think I understand why. They brought in a lot of new talent. Signetti has a great track record. What do you think they'll be able to do in year one there in Bloomington? Yeah, and, and frankly, I'm surprised that the media picked Indiana 17th in the 18-team yeah. Big Ten because I'm a I'm a Kurt Signetti fan. I'll, I'll go back to last year when I talked to him, and uh, you know, I'm like, well, you got some question marks there at the uh, the quarterback spot, coach. And he's like, look, I always have an all-conference quarterback, and I will have an all-conference quarterback this year. And boom, Jordan McLeod is an all-conference quarterback. So talking to him this year, uh, he's like, you know what, Phil? We will be a team that makes a bowl game. We we're going to be right up there in the Big Ten. And I like the talent he's brought in. You look at Curtis Rourke at quarterback. He's a guy that was all MAC conference two years ago. Uh, the running back core, you've got the black coming in from James Madison, Ellison from Wake Forest, Lawton coming in from James Madison. I like that group. That, and then defensively, I love JMU's defense last year. Well, it's all pretty much on that Indiana roster now, and I think they're pretty talented. Uh, and when you look at their schedule, they've gotten a lot of winnable games on there. I only am a pure underdog in two games. I do have some toss-up games, you know, at Michigan State, home to Nebraska, at Northwestern, at UCLA. But they can easily pull those off. And when a new head coach has success early on, the players really buy in, and all of a sudden the season turns out to be much better than expected. So uh, they are my number four most improved team, and uh, I think they'll have finished much higher than number 17 in the Big Ten. I think so, too. There's a lot of talent there. It's that he's got a nice track record. All right, before we get out of here, I did want you to have a moment to tell people where they can find your content, where they can buy your preview magazine, because we're talking here in early August. There's still uh, a lot of runway, I think, for that to, to be relevant. I know it's made me a smarter fan this offseason. So where can people find your stuff and, and buy some of your preview content? Well, first of all, let me ask you a question before I get to that, Bennett, yeah. and that is how often do you use the magazine during the course of the year? I do use it during the year as well. Yeah, for sure. Especially early in the year, middle of the year, trying to look at teams that maybe have fallen short of expectations or checking out your projected depth charts. Those tend to be really, really valuable for me. Appreciate that. Yeah. The magazine's 352 pages. You get two full pages on every team. And I give the same amount of coverage on a team like James Madison that I do in Alabama and Texas. Two full pages, all the information in the same spot. It's better than having 134 media guides on your desk, but it's like having 134 media guides. Now, you can get it only in two places, Barnes & Noble and Books A Million. Those are the only brick-and-mortar stores to get it. But you can also go to philsteel.com. And when you go to philsteel.com, I'm going to charge you a shipping charge, but we give you the digital magazine magazine for free and the digital magazines actually updated all the way through the start of the season coaching changes injuries that happened in august uh, it's all updated in the digital version plus i put out a weekly newsletter called inside the press box where i forecast all the games all season long so head over to philsteel.com check out my daily blogs uh, go ahead go to the store and get your magazine or Barnes and Noble and Books a Million definitely still have the magazines. Get them before they're sold out if you want to pick one up today. Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, or philsteel.com. It's an invaluable resource. Can't recommend it enough. Phil, thanks for coming on. We appreciate your insights. 
Hey, a lot of fun talking football with you, Bennett. Uh, always enjoy talking JMU. Most of the shows I do, I'm talking all the big boys. <laughs> never really get to d- dive in deep into the Sun Belt. So appreciate you having me on. Yeah, we love your insights. Thanks so much. Thank you.